and by Checkpoint Saw BMW, serving Western New York for 27 years. Bills. For the first time since week one of the 88 season, Marv Levy's Bills are not in first place in the AFC East. That's a streak of 34 consecutive weeks. First place now belongs to the Miami Dolphins, who whipped the Bills up, down, and sideways this afternoon at Joe Robbie Stadium. Well, hello again, everybody. I'm Ed Kilgore, and welcome to Sports Extra. And what a difference a week makes. Just last week, the Bills were riding high after beating the Colts. We were gonna do. We know what we're capable of. The people that are doubters, please, go go find another team, do something like that, because we don't have time for doubters. If you want to be a part of the Buffalo Bills, have confidence and faith in us, and we're gonna come through in the end. All right. Well, the way the Bills played this afternoon, it isn't easy to envision them as a title team of any kind. But how do you feel? Do you think the Bills are gonna bounce back and win the AFC East again, or is it somebody else's turn? Now, here's our question. On the telepole, do you think the Bills are going to win the AFC East? If you think yes, they are, they're going to bounce back and win this thing. 644-9900. And if you think no, they are not going to win it this year, 644-9905. Be kind of interesting to see what, uh, what the fans think. Now, in just a little bit, we're going to have linebacker Carlton Bailey with us live. That should be interesting. And our roundtable discussion should be interesting as well. We're also going to have highlights of the Sabres exhibition game at Chicago tonight. And a look at the Buffalo Major League expansion presentation coming up. First, back to Miami, kind of a balmy day, interrupted by showers briefly in the second period. Now, the Bills look pretty good on their first possession. Now, Thurman Thomas running well. Jim Kelly then fades back and hits Andre Reed for the first down. And the Bills are marching very, very well. However, it gets down to a fourth down and just over a yard to go at the Dolphins' 29. Marv says, let's go for it. But Larry Kennebrew is stopped. Now... That was a big boost for the Dolphins. Did Marv consider the 46-yard field goal attempt? It would have been a 46-yarder into what was then a pretty good breeze, John. We had a better chance, in my opinion, of picking up a yard than we had of making a 46-yard field goal into that breeze. All right, so the Dolphins then take over, and they march confidently down the field. And that kind of sets the tone of who's going to be the boss, the Bills, we're seemingly a step behind all day. Marino hits a tight end, Farrell Edmonds. He fumbles after the Nate Odom's hit, but the Bills can't get the ball, and the drive then continues. Now we go to third and six, and Marino to Jensen, who just ended his holdout earlier this week. He runs over J.D. Williams. That's a first down. And then on the first play of the second quarter, a Sammy Smith will take it in from two yards out. A Shane Conlon dives through the air and misses. And it's 7-0 Miami. That was a 71-yard drive that took 16 plays and ate up 9 minutes, 11 seconds on the clock. You know, this was a team effort by the Bills. The defense couldn't stop them. The offense turned it over on the next two possessions, and that led directly to two more uh, field goals. First, Pete Metzelars, who missed the entire preseason, fumbles his first catch of the season on a very, very solid offered all hit. And uh, Pete says, hey, uh, I sure didn't mean to do it. Just a crossing pattern. I caught the ball and got hit as soon as I caught it, and the ball popped out. It shouldn't have happened, and uh, you know, hopefully it never will again. But it was costly. A field goal makes it 10-0 Miami. Then a Kelly pass intended for Keith McKellar, tipped by uh, uh, one of the Dolphins. Uh, Lewis Oliver makes a terrific interception, the kind of day Kelly couldn't believe. We only scored seven points and give up 30. Um, we got our butts beat. They, they came out. They, they earned their victory. You got to give them credit where credit's due. So the Bills are down 13-0 late in the first half, but they have the ball with less than a minute to go, and they have a chance to get some points and get back in this thing, but that backfires like just about everything else. And Thomas cannot hang on to a Kelly pass. This would have been a first down on the third and 18 or close to it. And then rookie John Neese, who didn't get the punt a week ago, well, he contributed today with some short line drive punts, and that helps uh, Tony Martin get a good return here. And amazingly, the Dolphins 
are going to have a chance to put some more points on the board, and they're going to do that as Marino here with the pass. This one to Duper for 14 yards, and they're going to get another crack as Pete Stojanovic from 48 yards, normally out of his range, but he hits this one, and it's 16-0 Dolphins at the half. Now, how bad were the Bills in the first half? Well, their offense gained a total, total of 66 yards. The Dolphins averaged over five yards on first down. The Bills less than two yards. But unlike 87, when the Bills were down 21-3 at the half, there wouldn't be a comeback this time. First, another turnover. Thurman Thomas to the right side. He coughs it up. The Dolphins recover at midfield. And then just about any doubt about the outcome of this one is erased. The Dolphins march 51 yards in nine plays. Eight of these plays come on the ground. Now Sammy Smith is going to get another crack at it at the uh, one. And it's now 23-0 Dolphins. It looks like he's very close, but he is over the plane there. Then in the fourth quarter, now watch the lower right part of your screen. Daryl Talley and Bruce Smith go, both get uh, sucked inside on this little uh, play-action rollout by Marino, and he finds his man all alone. Tony Page takes it in for the easy touchdown. It's now 30 to nothing. Finally, the Bills saves some total embarrassment in the hurry-up. Kelly to Andre Reed, and then that will set up the Kennebrew touchdown. That's a little too little too late. Frank Reich then takes over with about seven minutes to go in the game, but it's just a total domination by the Dolphins. But the Bills say they will bounce back. I think it's a combination of both. It's, you know, we had, we had a bad day. There's no question about that. And the Dolphins are a good football team. But like the Phoenix, we will rise again. Well, we'll see about that, but a total domination by the uh, Dolphins today, and the Bills are going to have to go to New York next Monday night, and the Jets are looking pretty good. Well, once again, We'd like to remind everybody to take part in tonight's Sports Extra telepoll, uh, telepoll or question once again. Do you think the Bills are going to win the AFC East if you're optimistic about it and think they'll bounce back? 644-9900. If no, you think this team's not going to do it? 644-9905. And we'll have the results for you at the end of the program. Well, switching gears a little bit here, the Sabres open their preseason tonight against the Chicago Blackhawks. When we come back, we're going to show you highlights from that game. Plus, West has a Bison expansion update as Sports Extra continues. The European Auto Rally, the historic spawning ground for Saabs. But now there's a new Saab, powered by the largest engine Saab ever built. But it's also highly civilized and incredibly spacious. Because passionate drivers don't just run races. Sometimes they run errands. The 9000S. We don't make compromises. We make Saabs. Checkpoint Saab BMW serving Western New York for over 27 years. You know, one of the things I like best about Buffalo is Mike Subs. Oh, <laughs> I grew up on him. And one of my favorites. And let me tell you, they really do it right. From the fresh quality meats to Mike's special oil, shredded lettuce, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but there's just something about a Mike's. Mike's Giant Submarines. 30 delicious subs, hot and cold. Come on into Mike's and get great sensations today. This old floor has seen some living. Looking down from way back. Older floors have cracks and crevices that trap dirt. Top Job has ammonia. Top Job penetrates deep, dissolves the trapped in dirt that makes older floors look dull. When I give this job to Top Job, this old floor will go again. It's September. Do you know where your long underwear is? Darling, where's my long underwear? Where's my long underwear? Darling, where's my long underwear? So with that loss to Miami this afternoon, the Bills are now 1-1 one one in the division, and it doesn't get any easier because next week 
They travel to New York to take on the Jets on Monday night, and the Jets pretty impressive this afternoon against uh, a quality opponent. I mean, uh, I wouldn't call Cleveland a, a legitimate Super Bowl contender, although they are a pretty good football team, and the Jets handled them. Well, I think their offense has a way to go. Ed. They've only scored, I think, one touchdown now all season, but Buffalo's opponents next week, the Jets, got off to a uh, bad start today against the Cleveland Browns. Eventually, they came back as on the opening kickoff, Eric Metcalf ran it in, but in the second quarter, the Jets up 17-7. to uh, Ken O'Brien hits Freeman McNeil, and he takes it down the sidelines. 59-yard gain to the one-yard line. Baxter then, from a yard out, makes the score 24-7 to Jets, and uh, they hold on to win it 24-21 to as uh, there was a, a little uh, shoving and... Uh, uh, problems going on there between the uh, Jets and Cleveland, but again, the Jets take a 24-21 over the Browns this afternoon. Now, it was a meeting between the oldest starting quarterback in the league and the top draft choice. Uh, Jeff George is New England, and uh, Steve Grogan met the Colts in Indianapolis. Grogan over the middle to Hartley Dykes. Nice move, 29 yards. Boy, the touchdown, this ties the game at 7. Then, about two minutes left, George goes up top to Billy Brooks to bring the uh, Colts within 16-14, to 14, but the Pats held him off and intercepted Jeff George four times in this game and take it by a count of 16 to 14 over Indianapolis this afternoon. The San Diego Chargers trying to upset the uh, Cincinnati Bengals and Boomer Esiason out of Jack Murphy Stadium late in the fourth quarter. Chargers on a third and 20. Boomer hits Eddie Brown in the end zone and puts the Bengals up 21-16. The Chargers got the ball back, but Anthony Miller fumbles a Billy Joe Tolliver pass right here, and for the second week in a row, the Chargers lose after leading in the fourth quarter, 21-16 today to the Cincinnati Bengals. What had to be the biggest upset of the day, the Phoenix Cardinals edged the highly touted Philadelphia Eagles, who suddenly find themselves at 0-2 this season for Buddy Ryan. Under two minutes, 21-20 Eagles. Tim Rosenbaugh to Ricky Kroll gets an interference call on the uh, aggressive Eagles defense. And then Aldell Greco, 42-yarder, uh, in the waning moments as the Eagles fall to the Phoenix Cardinals, 23 to. 21 this afternoon at the vet. The Chicago Bears are starting to look like the monsters in the midway again. They handled the Green Bay Packers this afternoon at Curly Lambeau Field in Green Bay. 6.29 left, third quarter. Bears led 17-10. Harbaugh puts the fake on and goes 40 yards to Ron Morris. And the Bears go on to uh, even their record at 1-1, 31-13 over Green Bay. And I beg your pardon, the Bears are now 2-0. Things started a little choppy between the Raiders and the Seattle Seahawks today. Uh, this is Robert Townsend putting a big cross on Ron Heller. And, hey, Chuck Knox says, give him one for me. Anyway, late in the fourth quarter, Jay Schrader hits Mervyn Fernandez here. The Raiders have those big, speedy receivers. And then Greg Bell, the former Bill, takes it in a couple of plays later. And that was the winner today for the Raiders as the Seahawks fall to 0-2. And, and the Raiders go to 2-0, 17-13 winners today. Frisco, well, what's new? The 49ers beat uh, the Redskins 26-13. They go to 2-0. The Giants are also perfect, 28-7 over Dallas. Tonight at Pittsburgh, the Steelers beat the uh, Houston Oilers 20-9. The Rams get their first win, 39-14 over Tampa Bay. And a battle of the uh, run-and-shoot offenses, Detroit and the Lions beat the Atlanta Falcons 21-14. Minnesota over New Orleans, 32-3. Tomorrow night, Kansas City hosts Denver, each of those uh, uh, looking for a win out in that AFC West. Well, the Buffalo Sabres took to the ice tonight to begin assault on what they hope will be the Stanley Cup. The preseason opener at Chicago Stadium, and uh, watch the bottom of your screen, it's Grant Ledger, who gets the shot off in the first period to put the Sabres up 1-0 on the Chicago Blackhawks. Then Christian Rutu, with some nice uh, work around the net, gets it out in front to Jay Wells, who buries it, and a couple of defensemen put the Sabres up 2-0. Then in the second period, here's what Sabre fans want to see all year. Dale Howarchuk on a breakaway. His first goal as a Sabre puts him up 3-1, although the Blackhawks overcame that lead and went on to win it in overtime on Steve Thomas's second goal of the game. 5-4 is the final tonight. Ledyard, Wells, Howarchuk, and John Tucker adding a late goal for the Sabres. 5-4, they will now play uh, at Quebec on Tuesday night. Well, the National League Baseball Expansion Committee this week begins hearing pitches from the 10 cities for the two new teams up for grabs in 1993. Bob Rich Jr. and his group will make Buffalo's presentation on Tuesday. And this week I talked with attorney Bob Suedos, a member of Buffalo's ownership group, about the expansion proposal and process. 
What is the presentation going to be? I understand there will be some audio-visual uh, portions of the presentation. What is Bob Rich going to try to do here? I think he's going to try to convince the committee that Buffalo is the best qualified, that it meets all the requirements. And different people will be there to present different aspects of that case. But the last aspect is the ownership. Are these people the kind of people that we want in this business? Now, is that the case in the uh, National Hockey League Expansion Committee, which you are a member of? Yes. Uh, ownership is the most important thing, I would say period? I would say ownership is the most important, yes. So then the art of persuasion could play a big role on Tuesday. Suedos knows this, having attempted to accomplish the same result in the city's unsuccessful bid 22 years ago. Uh, we were told we had to see the three members of the expansion committee, Mr. Hoff Heinz. And I can remember uh, talking to him up in the high bowels of the Astrodome with a small table for which there was no room for anything except three cigars. <laughs> Talking to him and trying to sell Buffalo and the stadium in this empty, cavernous space. But why didn't Buffalo win a team in 1968? Well, Suedos looks back and identifies a couple of problems. One, stadium uncertainty. The town didn't have a facility. Rather, only a bond issue to finance a new domed stadium. Number two, ownership. And Suedos believes whatever the 68 expansion committee couldn't find, it will in 1990. Because if you made a profile of what you would like to have as a major league owner mm -hmm. sitting at the table as your partner, when you have important decisions to make, I think Bob Rich makes a very good profile. An owner, baseball owner, asked me not long ago, he said, uh, I guess baseball is in good hands in Buffalo. And I said, yes, the best. Okay, now uh, we hope that uh, the uh, committee can uh, persuade the National League Expansion Committee to, to believe that too, Ed. And we should point out here, this is only for the first impressions, and they'll pare it down to the short list of three to five teams by December after they talk to these folks this week. I know one thing, uh, Bob Rich is going to have a heck of a presentation. I would say so. I'd like to be a bug on the wall. In the yeah, and, and, and listen to that. Yeah, an impressive ownership group. Well, uh, of course, getting back to that disappointment today of the Bills, Carlton Bailey will be with us in just a moment, so uh, stay with us. Some cars you buy because you have to, and some because you want to. Have to, want to, have to, want to. Then there's the Saab 9000S, with the largest engine Saab ever built, plus the space and solidity of a station wagon. The 9000S, a car, not a compromise. Because we don't make compromises, we make Saabs. Checkpoint Saab BMW, serving Western New York for over 27 years. You know, one of the things I like best about Buffalo is Mike Subs. Oh, I grew up on them. They're one of my favorites. And let me tell you, they really do it right. From the fresh quality meats to Mike's special oil, shredded lettuce, I don't know what it is, but there's just something about a Mike's. Mike's Giant Submarines. 30 delicious subs, hot and cold. Come on into Mike's and get great sensations today. Don't dads get a day off? And open your eyes. Coast, your spirits start to rise. Coast is the way to bring you back to life. The scent mm. awakens your senses. Hey, you guys, where you been? Coast brings <laughs> you back to life. Bounty means never having to say, I'm sorry. Bill. Sorry. I'm sorry. <gasps> so sorry. So sorry. Bounty's quicker, 
and thicker than any other national two-ply paper towel. Bounty, the quicker, thicker picker-upper. Bounty means never having to say your... All right, and with us now, Carlton Bailey, who... Uh was expecting to have a little more fun tonight on the show instead of talking about a loss. I'll ask you the same question as a telepole. Bill's going to come back and win the AFC East, Carlton? Oh, definitely. You can't count just one loss as, as, as the whole season, you know. Sometimes uh, early in the season you need losses like that. Maybe if we hadn't gotten our butt uh, kicked so bad, but every now and then I guess uh, a loss is, is good for a team. And really, you really have opportunity to find out what your character and what your team is really all about. One thing that kind of bothers me about this one, though, is not the loss, but, I mean, you're right, it was a butt-kicking. I mean, they, they took no prisoners, and uh, that kind of, you know, that, I think that surprised a lot of people. I know uh, a lot of people thought maybe the Dolphins would beat you, but they handled you. Well, we really didn't think they would beat, or they, they would have opportunity to beat us, but they said it was Don Shula's 200 uh, uh, game, and he, I guess they wanted to win for that, and it just came out, and they executed really well out there, and uh, for us, we had some turnovers and defenses, you know, we really didn't get the job done. So I guess it was a combination of the whole thing. We just didn't play well as a team. Did you feel like the Bills were emotionally ready? I mean, you obviously you knew what you were going into down there. The Dolphins have been thinking about this not only in the preseason. They've been thinking about this game all during the offseason. They've been pointing at this game. They almost looked past New England, as a matter of fact. They were so pointed to this game. So you knew we were going to be running into a buzzsaw down there. Was the, were the Bills really fired up? I mean, it just didn't look to me like there was a lot of emotion out there. Yeah, I'd say we were fired up, but every now and then, uh, I guess you get kind of complacent in a sense. Beat a team, I guess, what, three years in a row or something yeah, like that? Yeah, six straight. Six straight. So maybe, maybe a couple of guys, or maybe we sort of had that sense where we'd go out there and maybe it was just supposed to happen for us. But we, but uh, as we both can see today, that you know, a lot of times uh, you can win on paper, but the game is actually played out there on the field. Now, who do you think should motivate a team? Should that be the coach's job? Should that be the player's job? I know the fans will say, well, the coach should go in there and uh, kick you know what and take names and get everybody fired up or do you think it should come from the players is it the players fault that they didn't play that well today or is it the coach's fault i feel as though the coach he will have he should have a little part a little play in that part but i i believe that there's no motivation like self-motivation and all those types of things should come from within you're starting this year so to end this on a positive note which has to be the culmination of a dream for you although you are alternating a, a little bit but uh, to be starting in the national football league on a team as good as the bills today notwithstanding that's got to be quite an honor make you feel good yeah it's definitely a, a dream come true It's something that i've been praying about for probably the last past three years ever since i came to buffalo and uh, you just you just sit back and you say hey when i was younger and i was growing up this is where i always wanted to be all right, well, good luck next week against the New York Jets. They'll be waiting for you. Yeah, uh, we're going to go out <laughs> there and, and do the, the best job we can. They are playing well now, and, you know, we're going to take this loss and, and regroup and, 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 and get the fire burning again. All right, thanks for coming on with us, Carlton. Carlton Bailey, and we'll be hearing more a lot from this guy in the coming weeks, I'm sure. And we're going to be back with uh, what should be an interesting roundtable in uh, just a moment. tumbles away static cling while it softens best of any dryer sheet. Downy softness even cushions a bubble. Soft, soft. Come on in, the feeling fine. Come on in to Downy. You probably think it's too early to start thinking about a new Arctic Cat snowmobile. Yep. Well, it's not. In fact, they're arriving at your dealer right now. Well, you might want to wait until winter to ride them. It pays to buy your new Arctic Cat right now. Buy a new Arctic Cat now and get up to $300 in clothing and accessories free from participating Arctic Cat dealers. No Co. Quality gasoline at competitive prices. 
serve, self-serve, or select We Serve locations with prices as low as most self-serves. And all three grades of NOCO Unleaded contain the detergent DRX7 Plus to help your engine run clean. For convenience, variety, and value, our NOCO Express shops have supermarket prices without supermarket lines. NOCO, Western New York's largest independent supplier of petroleum products. You're up. I'm sleeping. You were walking. I was walking in my sleep. Have your coffee. And hey, yours is darker than mine. Mine's decaffeinated Folgers crystals. Yours is the decaffeinated you always drink. Did you use the same amount? Yeah, watch. Mm. Mine's mountain grown Folgers. Nice aroma. Mm. A sip? Yeah. Hmm. I thought I was the reason you're always so bright-eyed in the morning. Oh, you are. Decaffeinated Folgers crystals. So dark and rich, shouldn't you switch? Transportation for guests on Sports Extra provided by Prestige Limousine Service, serving all of Western New York and Canada. Guests on Sports Extra receive a radar detector from Advanced Auto Electronics, servicing all your needs from sunroofs to car stereos. Guests also receive a $50 gift certificate to the Pro Image for the look and feel of a pro. Well, judging by our response from uh, you fans, today's Bill's loss in Miami did not impress you. Uh, we had over 1,500 calls, uh, over four, well, between 14 and 1,500, a lot of calls, and 32% uh, think the Bills are going to win the AFC East. 68% of our callers say no, the Bills are not going to win the AFC East. And at this point, gentlemen, I would say based on what happened today, it's anybody's guess, it's toss a coin, because uh, I suppose the good news is the Bills are healthy. Of course, Maybe it's, they didn't hit anybody hard enough to get hurt, but... Uh, well, you know, know, Carlton had something interesting to say. He said, maybe it's a wake-up call, but how many times did we hear that last year and no one really woke up? I think the most disturbing thing about this is, I think Ed mentioned it a little bit earlier, uh, there have been too many dog road games by the Bills. I mean, the, the road performances are just... Roads, some of them are pathetic. Roads, you know what? We looked it up here. We were talking about this just a minute ago. The Bills have won one of their last eight road games, and that doesn't count the preseason... <laughs> <laughs> so that would be about one out of the last 20. But, you're, you know, a team has to win on the road, and they've got to got to display some toughness there. There's no emotion on the road a lot of the times. I mean, you see the emotion at home when there's 80,000 fans, and you expect that. But on the road, there's very little emotion, uh, and it seems to come and go. They, they rarely put four quarters together on the road. Well, you know, uh, it's very early, and things are going to get very tough later. Uh, but, you know, Marv said this week that the way to get a team motivated is by preparation and you got to believe they were they weren't too motivated yeah, <laughs> I don't know if they weren't motivated or they weren't prepared you got to believe they were fairly well prepared but now uh, you're getting into a situation where even if they're prepared maybe they're not motivated so maybe he's not right about that and um, but you, know, you can't believe that the Dolphins are 23 some... point better 23 points better no. than the Bills right. but you, you know but we're the Bills see it, it's a game of emotion uh, the, sure. the, the talent level in the NFL is very very even and if you get one team 